Uh, this is Scott Kelly from Neurosis, and you're watching Stubble, the new growth in music. Hey, this is Jeff with Stubble Music Zine, and I am in England for the Temple Meads Festival, and I'm hanging out with... Steve. Scott. From the mighty Neurosis. Um, I think you guys are incredible musicians. I really appreciate you taking the time. And I Thanks. really look forward to the show. You know they put a warning out for tonight, right? What's that, for your ears? Yeah, the warning That's was. That's no fucking joke. No, I'm not. The sound guy is a, is a really mean, really mean guy. What so. decibel level does he throw? Is that like, we talking motorhead levels? Or are we talking yeah, over? It's hard to tell, but it's not, it, it, you know. It's, what he does is volume. But it's not piercing and horrible. Nobody wants to deal with piercing and horrible. Exactly. It's loud, but it's warm. And when it needs right. to hurt, it will hurt. But when it needs to just be loud and heavy, it's just loud, heavy, and warm and yeah. defined. Not, you know. Yeah, he's not a out. complete, you know, sadist. You know, <laughs> but he, he does have the main streak, and he's, you know, yeah. And that room is just kind of perfect for what we're doing. It's nice and compact and. Lots of speakers. Is this the first Temple Meads festival I think they're having? I think it's the first one ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This festival is different. I mean, this isn't some huge... Mm -hmm. you know, this is a small... Underground, underground. really on the fringe. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, you know, playing with our peers and, and you know, that kind of thing as opposed to a, a giant pop festival that has a side tent for heavy music or something. So, is it becoming profitable for you guys? If, yeah, basically, at this point, it can be, as long as we don't have any major fuck-ups. But, you know, I mean, we lost money for ever and ever and ever. So, if it's the band, this band being profitable, I, I mean, if you were to look at it over the 28 years that we've been together, I don't even know. If it, we can do okay. I mean, we can, you know, help, help you know, subsidize our, our incomes off of it. Um, you know, and, and I'm sure if we, you know, if we toured all the time, we could, we could do pretty good. Um, but at the same time, it would be, that would be sacrificing a lot of stuff that we're not willing to sacrifice. And we've so. seen that change too, because there was times it, where we, we thought we could, yeah. and then all of a sudden, Germany doesn't like guitar music anymore for five right, years, right. and yeah, then exactly, and then you've been around the U.S. too many times, and you're starting to recognize that gas station in the middle of India, <laughs> and you know exactly where the Yuhu is. And people don't want to. People don't want to come out too. If you, you know, you can't. I mean, the way that we, what we do, and the way that we do it to people. Uh, people just can only take so much of it, you know. I finally was able to catch you guys live in December. I was a little disappointed at first, thinking because of the visuals, it's you know it's legendary, right? But I have to tell you, the stripped down with just the music completely blew me and my friends' head off. I I, I don't know what I would have done if there was visuals. You know, how's everybody? Uh, how's the crowds reacting to uh, to the change in style? Like think like you just said. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, and it was one of those things we were hesitant to let it go for a minute because we were hooked on that. That's what we do. But we really thought about the purpose of it in 19, you go back to 1992, you know, when we first started using the visual elements, you know, and, and there wasn't video projectors in places. Right. There wasn't uh, the Internet like there is. There wasn't any of this massive screen Right. culture that we live in shit. live in now <laughs> and and we took it from the you know the as far as the mechanics of it we i think we borrowed the idea from almost more of an art scene, <clears throat> industrial like warehouse kind of art damage perspective but we used a lot of the equipment from the 60s guys who were hot rodding slide projectors and making color wheels and right, right. you know and it was in 2000 after we had had enough of that with with that person that was was doing that that we brought Josh in uh, for a decade of getting us really polished and in the video world as that seemed more cutting edge and then at the certain point it was just it felt a part of what mainstream culture is everybody's always staring at screens and it wasn't some political decision or something like that it just felt like actually now the music is probably more powerful because back then the whole idea was psychologically break somebody's mind open with hypnotic strobing visuals so the music would penetrate deeper 
Right and now. now they're all broken. They come into the show <laughs> yeah. broken already yeah. because they've been hypnotizing themselves all day long. And so what the best thing we could do would be to give them some stark uh, with no escape whatsoever, and it's actually way more oppressive without the visuals because we we don't offer them a alternative. They can't just kind of zone out and self soothe themselves on the pretty pictures anymore. Right, right. You know, they got to look at our ugly asses and fucking deal with the the volume and the weight of the emotion of the music. Intuition more than design. I, mean, I think that's that's the type of music we were just put here to create and. The, magic of what we all bring to the table with all our individual strengths it just brings all these different layers of depth and and things that we you can key into at different moments and different things that move you but it's not an intellectual design it's a gut level expression for sure um my favorite track off of that my heart for deliverance um the the sample in towards the end uh did you guys write that the spoken sample yeah, um, you'd have to ask Noah, but I don't think so. Um, I think that he got that from somewhere else, but I don't know that for, to be a fact. Um, we had a friend of ours read it. Um, it's her voice that you're hearing, but um, over the cell phone at that moment when the idea came. It was actually over Skype. But, over Skype, yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> chokes me up when I hear yeah, it. It gets me too every night when we play it. Like that's a really intense moment for me. Like I. I really feel it coming, and then the part that comes after it is, like, really, like, cuts it loose. Wow. So. And, and you find that throughout the album, right? When I first got it and I would be driving, you know, the, the slower parts come, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's cranked it up a little bit, and then, bam, it would just come back in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had that experience, not with my own shit, but with, you know, like, Sleep's done that to me before or something. Big fan of Sleep. Um, well, that's all family right there, so, you know, you're definitely getting a feel for, uh, I mean... We're all real close, you know, so. Real quick on uh, side projects, I know this isn't your main deal. You guys working on any Shrine Builder or are you working on any projects, anything else you want to plug at this point? Well, Shrine Builder's done. Um, We can officially say it's dead? Yeah, it's over. Um, uh, At least in its original incarnation, it won't be back, but, but I have a... I have a new band called Corrections House, and we put out a record last year, and we just started recording a second record. Um, I've got solo shit with my Road Home band is happening. Well, I missed your I missed your solo acoustic show you did, and uh, a lot of people did. Well, I I had saw part of it, I saw it online, but I, for whatever reason I wasn't in town at the time. Yeah. But what do you think about uh, uh, Buzzo from the Melvins? kind of taking the yeah. lead and doing the same thing. I mean, he's really just yeah. doing acoustic versions of Melvin songs. Yeah. Hey, man, you know. And it reminded me, reminded me exactly what you did. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, nothing wrong with picking up an acoustic guitar and jamming, you know, so. Well, the big question is, um, you guys working on any new material? We don't have a timeline, we're, but it's starting to boil up a little bit. Yeah, we're definitely, like, we're definitely starting to make our, make room um, so that we can make time. Oh. together to start really focusing because uh like you said it's starting to boil up this time what kind of set list can we expect tonight uh similar to what you saw at the regency excellent with a little bit more <laughs> yeah we got yeah yeah, exactly yeah let me let me bring it down we got a shortened set you know was, uh, i had food poisoning up. oh that's before, right and i could barely you notice not, that i was the only one sitting. i had a trash can next to my amp and I could barely. Yeah, no, it wasn't that at all. It was it's sick. Steve was sick. I mean, How you feeling now? Oh, great. Good. Awesome. That, yeah, that was 48 <laughs> hours. We just Don't barely... eat raw chicken cooked by stoners. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. The chicken tastes like death metal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, th- this is Jeff with Stubble. We're out.